Good morning everyone, welcome back to Ravers Mead. Um, I was kind of planning on doing this video on a really nice sunny day, but it's a bit it's a bit spotty with rain. I think it's gonna be raining on and off for about a week now, so I'm just gonna to have to grab my windows where I can and get stuff done. That's the conclusion I've come to. Um, so today's video, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about Sweet Itch. Um, it's the beginning of May now, and Sweet Itch season is well and truly coming upon us. Uh, the midges have been out in force around here. I think the combination of like all this rain, like interspersed with really sunny days has just made the perfect breeding conditions for them. Um, and I've seen just clouds, like literally hordes of them around and about, which is not good. So we really need to start thinking about um, Blue in particular, but also Woody. He suffers from mild sweet itch, not as bad as Blueberry does. Um, so I thought I would just give you guys um, a little bit of insight today into how I go about dealing with this problem. Don't try and untie yourself. No, cheeky boy. Yeah, just give you guys a few sort of tips um, that I've picked up over the years. So I'm just going to explain to you and show you how I go about dealing with this. He's trying to untie himself again. Hey, what are you doing? Cheeky boy. Been rubbing your moustache through the mud, haven't you? Yes, you have. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, or for anyone who is new to this problem, um, sweet itch is a bit of a pain in the backside, for lack of a better phrase. Um, it affects all types of horses all over the world. Um, basically, anywhere that you're going to get a midge, you can get sweet itch. Um, so a lot of people will confuse sort of general itchiness with sweet itch, but true sweet itch is actually an allergic reaction to midge bites, uh, more specifically midge saliva. So the midges bite the horse and then the horse has an allergic reaction to the saliva from that bite and then that will manifest over the horse's body as like obsessive itching like really obsessive to the point you know they'll rub themselves until they bleed it's, the skin goes really hard um, it quite often loses the hair in the areas that are affected as well um, and it goes kind of like it almost goes kind of silvery. I mean, it does vary a little bit depending on what color your horse's skin is, but it goes kind of like silvery, kind of scaly looking. It's just, it's horrible. Um, most common areas you're gonna get it are gonna be sort of along the crest, um, uh, along the belly line under here, and sort of around the dock, um, and just above the dock, just up here. This is, this up here, just above the tailbone is a really bad area for blue and also his belly, but he also gets it really badly here. Um, as you can see, he's been itching already this year and has ripped a lovely big hole in this, so he needs a new rug. Um, but he always has, so you can actually see here, this is the kind of thing we're talking about. Oh yeah, that's really bad already, that's not good. Oh, blueberry. Oh, I was hoping we'd have less problems this year. Never mind. Right. Um, anyway, I'll deal with that in a moment when we get to it. So yeah, that's, that's a very brief overview of what sweet itch is, how it manifests. Um, good example there on the neck, that's what the skin ends up looking like. Um, hey, 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 don't do that. Okay, so my first tip for dealing with this pain in the backside of a problem um, is get yourself a sweet itch rug. Oh, I'm just gonna do a camera check because it's spitting with rain and there's a few drops on there. Okay, that's a bit better. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do if your horse suffers from sweet itch is get a rug. This is my biggest and best piece of advice that I can give you is just get a sweet itch rug. You need to cover them up for two. So there's two real reasons for, oh, they're having a bromance. There's two real reasons for the rug method. Um, and that the first one is that obviously it's going to keep the midges off of them. Um, because there's a physical barrier. Having a physical barrier between them and the insect that's causing the problem is a massive help. Um, but secondly, it's also gonna help minimize the amount of damage they can do to themselves through scratching and rubbing on things. Because obviously it's an allergic reaction, so they get irritated by it, it makes them uncomfortable, and therefore they scratch and they make the whole thing worse. Um, so that's kind of like a two-pronged attack on that one. It keeps the bugs off and it helps to minimize the damage they do to themselves. So this has been like the biggest help for us in managing this problem is getting a decent rug. We use the ones from the big horse shop. So this is a, this is an actual sweet itch rug. Um, so it's got really good coverage. It has actually got ear holes, so you can pull it right up over the pole, but he doesn't like to wear his. So we just kind of live with that basically. He always gets it off somehow. 
Um, it's got a belly flap as well to try and keep them off the tummy. It's very, very long, generous fit, and it has a very, very large tail flap to protect all of this area as well. As you can see, it's gigantic. Um, there are loads of companies that do sweet itch rugs. We just use the big horse shop because our horses are gigantic, chunky beasts, and it's the only brand that fits them. But there's loads of other stuff. Uh, Snuggy Hoods does like a kind of a bodysuit, a bug bodysuit. Um, and I think there's something called a bug rug. I think I'm sure I've seen that. I don't know what brand does it, but that's like another bodysuit style rug. Um, I've seen people using them and they seem pretty good, but they were really expensive like five or six years ago when I was last around people using them. So God only knows how much they cost these days. Um, these rugs are ooh, well over a hundred pounds. They're under 200, but they're over a hundred. Um, we usually try and get them on sale, but I think I've missed it this year. So if you watch our videos at all, you will notice that Blue and Woody pretty much live in their sweet itch rugs during the summer seasons. Um, basically, as soon as it's dry enough that they don't have to wear a turnout rug or the weather's good enough that they don't have to wear a turnout rug, they then live in these sweet itch rugs. Um, it's just worked out to be the best thing for them long term. Um, yeah, minimizes the damage. It's all about damage control when it comes to sweet itch because you can't really cure it. There isn't technically a cure. It's just a case of management. So management, damage control, that's what we're going for here. What are you doing, Trouble? <laughs> okay, so rug, that's, that's our first, first point of our attack. Um, and then on top of that, we kind of address things like um, skincare and bug repellency. So um, fly repellents obviously are a no-brainer if you have a horse with a problem relating to bug bites. Um, there's so much stuff you can try out there. Generally speaking, I stick to more natural stuff. Um, I make a lot of our fly sprays here. I do homemade fly sprays. I just use like natural oils like citronella, um, citronella, lavender, tea tree. Um, I experimented with cedarwood last year as well. That seemed to work quite well. Um, but there's loads of different stuff that you can try and you can use. Um, you don't have to make your own. I just like to because I know what's in it. Um, but yeah, any kind of fly repellent spray is gonna help. During the summer months, they get plastered in it at least once a day. Um, so their morning routine basically consists of being plastered in fly spray, followed by having their rugs on. Um, and usually that kind of does the trick. Sometimes they need a reapplication of bug spray during the day when it gets really, really bad. Um, when we have like really, really hot weather. Um, but yeah, bug spray is a big thing. Um, skin care. So obviously you're gonna get, you're gonna get lesions and like hard skin and all sorts of horrible stuff if you have true sweet itch. It's really hard to avoid it. So obviously Blue's got all of this at the moment. Um, oh, it's really itchy, isn't it? You're saying, no, it's really itchy, you've been scratching it. You're all fuzzy. So what I really need to do here, this could do with it. Oh, look at all the hair, it's so sad. Um, so this really needs a shampoo at this point. Um, so one thing I really like to do is I will do kind of like a medicated shampoo. Again, I tend to make my own here, but you can buy, there's so many sweetest shampoos and products that you can buy ready-made. Um, I said, I just like to make my own. Um, so what I'll do, I'll mix up some shampoo probably later on today, because that's really, really bad. Look at it. Yes. So his whole crest will end up like that if we don't deal with it. And his whole belly will end up like this. And um, yeah, his, his whole body could end up like that if we're not careful. So what I'm gonna do is I will mix up some shampoo later. I use neem oil. Neem oil has been one of my best friends for dealing with this problem um, for several reasons. The first one being that it's a good natural bug repellent. Um, it's also technically a pesticide because neem oil, when consumed by insects, it disrupts their ability to reproduce and breed. So it's not one of those things that's like an instant kill, but it has the ability to like disrupt the population over long-term usage. So I kind of like that. So that, that's a bit of an added bonus there. Um, and neem oil is also really, really good um, for skin health. Um, it promotes healing in the skin. It's antifungal. Um, I'm sure it's probably some other things as well that I've forgotten off the top of my head, but you'll find neem oil in lots of healthcare products these days, like skin products, like hand creams and shampoos and all sorts of stuff. 
it is really, really useful. So I'll mix up a solution of like tea tree shampoo, uh, sorry, tea tree? Um, neem oil shampoo later on today. I'll probably put some tea tree oil in it as well, again, for its skin healing benefits. Tea tree oil is another really, um, really useful essential oil that I love using every day. Um, and I'll give, I'm, to be fair, his whole body needs a bath. Um, I've noticed a little bit of uh, leg stamping from these guys the last few days as well. So I think we might have feather mites starting to show their ugly faces as well. So I think they really just need like an all over medicated bath just to get on top of all of this stuff. And then it will be just be like maintenance throughout the summer. In the summer months, he will have his neem oil shampoo done like once a week, sometimes twice a week. Um, and that really, really helps to keep him comfortable. And it really, really helps with the management of his symptoms. Um, there are also, again, like I said, there's loads of pre-bought stuff you can buy. Um, lots and lots of options out there. So once he's had his shampoo, um, I'll then usually go ahead and put something on it. I'm just gonna have a look, see if I've got anything in here. I may have, oh yeah, so I've got, uh, so this is, this is like a pre-made um, sweet itch treatment. It's called Kill Itch. Now the active ingredient in this and the active ingredient in most sweet itch lotions that you'll find is something called, I hope I say this right, benzo, benzoate. Um, it's basically the stuff they use to treat scabies and it really helps to soothe the itch basically and to help, you know, heal the skin um, by, you know, by relieving the itch, you give the, the horse a break from it so they itch it less so therefore it gets a chance to heal. Um, this stuff though is really expensive. This is like, this is £26.50 for this little bottle. Um, and we can get through several of these a month during peak sweet itch season, which again is why I've started looking at more natural alternatives like using um, essential oils and stuff. Um, so this stuff kind of gets used as a absolute emergency backup nowadays. Um, now I would like to use coconut oil as well. That's another really good, skin healing, um, moisturizing, helpful thing to put on, on sore skin. Um, the only thing you wanna be careful with coconut oil is that you don't slather it on on hot days because obviously it is an oil and you don't want your horse to get burnt. Um, stop trying to untie yourself. Stop trying to untie yourself. You're gonna to have to have a bath in a minute, I'm sorry, but we need to deal with that whole issue, don't we? You're sad because you know you're gonna get wet, aren't you? Yes, I know. I'm sorry, darling. I am sorry, but you know, itchy boys, we've got to look after you, haven't we? Um, sorry, completely sidetracked there. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of a bit of an insight into how I go about dealing with this whole issue that we have. So we rug them up, um, we give them medicated baths, I said usually once a week, sometimes more often throughout um, peak season. Uh, they have daily application of fly sprays. They have daily applications of like soothing and relieving lotions. Um, again, it doesn't matter overly which stuff you choose. You might have to try loads of different stuff to find one that works for your horse. Um, we've tried a few different things in the past and some of them haven't worked, some of them have, some of them work and they're too expensive. And you know, you've just got to play around with it and find something that works for you. Um, and then on top of that, it's just kind of general like management. So you see midges come out in the day. So one of the best things you can do if your horse does suffer from sweet itch is turn them out at night rather than in the day, because obviously there's going to be less bugs. Um, but you need to get your timing right with that. Because obviously if you turn them out, say five, six o'clock in the evening in midsummer, that is like peak midge time. Um, so you kind of need to get your timing. You need to study the behavior of, of the insect populations in your area to figure out when they're out. Around here, we usually get a bit of an influx. So I said somewhere between sort of five and 7 p.m. It's literally millions of little buggers out, it's horrible. You can't walk around with your mouth open and not swallow any of them, basically. Um, so if we're gonna put him out at night, it needs to be after that kind of influx of insect activity, otherwise he'll get eaten alive. And then you usually get another peak period in the morning as well. So you do need to watch for stuff like that. But generally speaking, turning out at night is a good shout. Um, keeping them in in the day, good shout. Um, and take into account like weather as well. Like today, it's spitting with rain, which won't necessarily stop them. But it is breezy. Um, midges don't like breezy. They like still air. 
So if you've got a really still day, you're gonna get more insect problems. If you've got a breeze in the air, like we have today, I like see the trees kind of moving a little bit. Um, yeah, they can't fly in this. So that's another thing you can do is, um, is put a fan in your horse's stable. We don't have that because we don't really, uh, we don't have mains electric. I mean, technically we could run one off of the solar panel we've got, but I've never really looked into it. Um, I don't know why, we've talked about it a few times before, but we've never kind of followed through with it. So we could look at doing that. That is a good option. I know lots of people will put fans in their horses' stables to help with, um, help keep the insects out. That's another thing you can do. Um, I think that's kind of it for the management things. And just, yeah, you just gotta watch. You just gotta watch what happens and just kind of use a little bit of common sense. You know, if, if you see there's loads of insects out at a certain time of day, don't put your horse out if you know he's gonna suffer from it. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it. That's that's pretty much our sweet itch care routine. Um, I feel like that video was a bit hickledy pickledy. I'm hoping I can edit that together in some kind of manner that makes sense to people. You're right, sweet boy. Hey. Um, oh, and the only other thing that I will mention, um, which looking looking at the state of his neck today, I do not think it was a success for us anyway. Um, but there is, um, there is kind of like a sweet itch vaccine now. It's not licensed to treat sweet itch. Um, I'm trying to think what it was called. It was called Insol, I believe, I-N-S-O-L. It's actually a ringworm vaccine, uh, which has been shown to have positive effects in sweet itch sufferers. So we've tried that earlier this year. Um, it has like a, a weird ratio success rate. So a third of horses, um, will have a complete relief of symptoms. Um, it'll be a massive success. Another third of horses will have like a mild relief of symptoms. And then one third of horses, it does absolutely nothing for. And I'm not hundred percent sure where we're at. Like clearly he's still suffering from symptoms. I mean, it's only May and he looks like that. So, you know, we're not doing so well here. Um, it's not looking good, but it will be interesting to see as the year goes on, if he is more comfortable than in years past when he hasn't had this, um, compared to now, obviously having it. Ah, Stumpy found the uh, lick it. I wonder what all the noise was, madam. But yeah, that is a that is a thing now. So again, it's kind of like mixed reviews on whether or not it's going to work. I don't think. Well, I don't think it's going to do what we hoped it was going to do, unfortunately. But even if we have an improvement on his situation, that would be a good thing, in my opinion. Um, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get some shampoo mixed up and give him a bath now because um, I just I really need to get on top of this. This is not good. Oh, are you bored? Are you bored? Is it boring? Well, you're gonna be entertained in a minute because you gotta have a bath. So you'll get to try and consume the sponge again, won't you? Yes. And my arm probably. Last time I tried to give him a bath, he just was determined to eat the sponge, and my hands just kind of went down his throat a few times. It was great fun. <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, if you have any sort of questions about sweet itch or anything like this, feel free to ask. I have a certain degree of knowledge in this area because obviously we've had to deal with it for so many years, um, but there's loads to learn about it still. Always stuff to learn. Equally, if anybody else has any tips, feel free to put them in the comments because, hey, don't rip your rug. I know you need a new one, but don't trash it anymore. Hey, no, no. Honestly, he's such a child. Man child, this one. Um, oh dear. So yeah, if you've got any uh, any tips, any anything that's worked well for you guys in the past, feel free to share it with me. I'm always open to trying new stuff. They're having a bromance again now. I keep getting distracted. I try to end this video and I keep getting distracted. Oh, you stop in now. Right, okay, time to go. Rain's coming out. Kevin doesn't like to get wet. Thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.